following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. In 1955 of uh, October, we will say it, the 27th of October of 1955, the Red Christ of Aquarius, whose name is Samael, incarnated in his Bodhisattva, whose name is On Veor. And uh, since that time, Samael On Veor started the unveiling of all the mysteries of the knowledge of Gnosis for the Western world and eventually for the whole world. <coughs> As you know, Bodhisattva <coughs> is a Sanskrit name that uh, means a vehicle of wisdom. So, Samael Onveor incarnated with the mission of giving unto humanity the tools, the keys for the development of the psyche and the spirit. And of course, as you know, he wrote many books, gave many lectures, and this school belongs to him because we are assisted by his force. And uh, his mission implies uh, different aspects. He says that uh, with the selection of psyches or selection of souls, he wrote many books in order for people to study the doctrine and to comprehend the path of the self-realization of the inner being. But of course his mission didn't end in 1977, as many people think, because he physically died and enter into a transition that is called reincarnation, or, uh, uh, I mean, r resurrection. Which is, of course, a theme or a topic that we are not going to talk today. But since that date, when he entered into his resurrection, people think that he disappeared and he is not active. But they are wrong. Because... Uh, Previous to his death, he had an encounter 
with uh, special people, resurrected masters, immortal beings with physical bodies. Not only from this planet Earth, but that encounter really was uh, uh, with masters from other planets. And uh, the topic uh, or the continuation of this lecture is going to be related with that in order for us to comprehend and understand this selection that uh, is uh, under his shoulders, but he is not alone. Many masters are behind him doing this selection for the future golden age that we explained in the previous lecture, because this is a continuation of it. So, he uh, narrated for us, when he was uh, alive physically in Mexico in 1976, many times an encounter that he had with these beings. And he told us, or narrated for us, this uh, event in order for us to meditate and comprehend the deep meaning of this message that he received that was related with his development and the mission that uh, presently he and we are doing uh, in this day and age. And in that epoch, 1976, or 1975, around those years, he decided to go into a forest that uh, is in the city of Mexico. The name of that forest is the Desert of the Lions. It's not a desert, it's not a wilderness, it's a forest, but has that uh, strange name associated, I believe, with the people that live there in that area, that uh, their last name was Lion. And somehow that had uh, that uh, name in that land. So he uh, used to go there many times because it's a beautiful forest in order to meditate and to reflect about his mission and to receive more uh, enlightenment and information about uh, the topics and events that will happen for this humanity. So that day, doesn't matter which date, he went into the woods, into that forest, in order to reflect and to have some serenity so then he uh, felt, he said, attracted to a certain uh, clear spot of the forest in order to meditate. He sat there and he entered into his meditation, like always. But he said that, that at that day, he felt like attracted to that special spot, which was, of course, uh, uh, surrounded by trees, big, clear space. While meditating, a noise interrupted his meditation. And when he opened his eyes, he saw the zoom, or we, he, the, the noise was a, a zoom of an extraterrestrial cosmic ship that was descending into that clear of the forest. And uh, curiously, he starts uh, seeing it with amazed, with amazing, that descension of that uh, cosmic ship that was uh, little by little and very softly landing on the ground of that part of the forest. The cosmic ship, he says, had uh, in his uh, bottom a tripod, a tripod, a tripod of uh, steel to hold the, 
the ship. So then, the, when the ship landed, he went because he intuitively felt that something was going to come in relation with his meditation, in relation with he was he was there. Immediately a door opened from the cosmic ship and the crew came out of it. And then he uh, courageously approached the crew of that cosmic ship, extending his right hand to the captain that he assumed that was because he was uh, dressing in a different way like the other members of the crew. And he said uh, in Spanish, Buenos dias, which in English means good morning. And he was surprised that the captain from that ship answered him in perfect Spanish. Buenos dias. And then he started talking with the captain in Spanish. And he was amazed because this uh, captain understood very well the Spanish language and he felt that he didn't only speak Spanish but many other languages of the earth. In other words, he knew later on that that captain and the crew were having what in this day and age people call the power of tongues, which means the ability of speaking any language in any part of the universe any planet. Many masters in this uh, planet Earth have that power. That is called the power of tongues. So then the, he talked and he started his uh, conversation with the captain and uh, he saw that uh, among the crew were two ladies. Very old, he says, he said that they were very old. In the sense that uh, their age was undescribable. But they didn't look old. When you look at the face of somebody and you notice that this soul or this person is very old, very ancient. But it doesn't look old but young. All of them look young. They were like uh, 1 meter 30 or 1 meter 40 centimeters in his stature. <coughs> so then, uh, he started the conversation and asked the captain, Captain, as you know, I am a true man, a human being, because he sensed that they were not only looking physically to himself, but also psychologically. And he says, as you know, I am a, a writer. I write many books. I give lectures. So I want you, please, to take me to the to other planet, out of this uh, planet. And then the captain asked him. Which planet do you choose? And then the master answers, Mars. Because, he said, my inner being, my monad that animate me, belongs to that planet. And I want to go there. And then the captain says, well, I thought something different, but uh, Mars is just there. And when he heard that Mars is just there, he understood that uh, for them, the planet Mars was not a big deal. And that that ship that descended in that clear of the forest belonged to another ship, which was called, we call it the mother ship. And they were intergalactic travelers. So obviously, when he asked to Mars, they said, this is just there, right? And they, it's too close. 
He's like going to the corner, right? Can you, can, I, can you please take me to the supermarket, something like that? So then the, he was, uh, uh, at the same time that he was talking with him and discovering all of this, he was wondering, what's going on? This is really, they are intergalactic travelers. And then he saw them, and they noticed that they were beings like one of us. The same shape. Not like Hollywood and other cinemas always uh, describe them like monsters. They were really, he says, beautiful shaped beings and physical and with the same sh human shape that we have, but more perfect. And they didn't talk. They were always keep silence. And only uttering words when it was necessary. But he, of course, he says, was wondered because uh, the type he never had that physically encounter in the planet Earth. So then he continued, please take me to Mars. It's not that I want it for myself, he says. I want it for this humanity. Because you know, in this planet, people think that they are the only ones in the universe. So if I go to other planets and bring proofs of the uh, humanities of other planets, that will help them. Because if I go and tell them about this encounter that I'm having with you, they won't believe me. Even if I cry tears of blood. But the captain keeps silence. And then the, the two ladies that were accompany him, walk forward toward the master and sit down in a piece of trunk that was on the ground. And then the master sat as well. So then when the, they were seated, one of the ladies approached the master and told him, if we take a plant which is not aromatic, and we place it next to another plant which is aromatic, the aromatic plant will impregnate with its perfume the other plant which is not aromatic. And then the plant which is not aromatic will have the same aroma of the other one. Do you understand that? Master says, yes, right, it's obvious. Well, said the lady, the same happened with the humanities of different worlds. Humanities that in the past were going bad, were impregnated with the vibrations of other humanities that were doing good. And now they are doing good. But we have descended into this planet that you call Earth, as you notice it. And we amazingly discover that here in this planet, this is not happening. What's going on? Can you explain to us what's happening with this planet, with this world, with this humanity? The Master said to us, obviously, that question was tremendous. And they were expecting an answer. They were not ordinary people. They were space travelers. And there was an explanation about that. Because, of course, they were traveling and visiting not only this solar system, but many solar systems. Who knows how many solar systems they know? of this galaxy and many other galaxies. But they were really surprised with this planet. They descended and saw hell, sexual degeneration, drug addiction, prostitution, wars, people that enjoy themselves killing other people in the name of freedom. And all of that that you know. So... The master says, 
well, this planet is a mistake of the gods, a mistake of the cosmo creators. And in order to round it, his question, I mean his answer, he said to them, this is how the karma of the world is. And when the extraterrestrials heard, this is how the karma of the world is, then they bend. They bow, they bow like a certain like agreeing with his answer. And then the other lady also, and all the crew of that cosmic ship bowed in reverence, like saying, you are right, this is the karma of the world. So he was happy that they understood. Then, he continued, he says, being stubborn, and said, please take me to Mars or to any planet. I want just to bring proof to this humanity about this because I have a mission here. And uh, the captain kept silence and he was following them. He was, they were returning into, into their ship. And then the captain, uh, after a long silence, he said to him, <coughs> okay, in the path or on the path we will see. Or we will keep seeing that on the path. And then he was happy that the captain gave him an answer. When he said that, on the path we will see. Alright? And he was happy because his answer was like, sometimes when you hear in this planet Earth, when the people said, yeah, I will be there tomorrow, around, you know, it's okay, uh, I will be. He says, of course, I was happy because they were not terrestrials. Because I know how the people of the earth are, he says. They promise something and they don't go. But they were extraterrestrials and they didn't have the ego. So I knew that the captain was referring to the path of the self-realization that I was walking in. Because I was approaching resurrection. I knew that he was telling me, on your path or on the path we will see. Because they were expecting to take him after resurrection. In order to do many things that humanity in this day and age are experiencing. And then he withdrew from the ship in order not to be damaged or hurt. And they departed into the mothership and went away. Since that date, he said, I am waiting. And I know that they will help me. That they will come in order to help you. They are, of course, immortal masters. Their bodies were related to another time. Not the time of this planet Earth. Because we have in this planet Earth one time in which our bodies grow up, get old, and die. But they are submitted to other times. To other times that we ignore. So then is uh, the end of the narration. And the Master said, we have to meditate in that, and to comprehend the message that was happening in that event, in all the words. When we investigate that in meditation, we discover precisely different aspects of the selection of souls that we always talk about in different lectures. This is a physical world. We have to understand that a three-dimensional world is not the only world or the only dimension that has life. In Gnosticism, we study 
seven basic dimensions. And we know that there is life in each one of them. Many times we talk about superior dimensions and inferior dimensions. And of course, when I said superior, we are referring to those dimensions above the three-dimensional world in which we live. And when I said inferior, we are referring to these dimensions which are inferior to this three-dimensional world in which we live. So, of course, when the captain was talking about, or when that lady was addressing the master with the example of the plants, he was addressing not only the three-dimensional world, but the inferior and the superior, because the master was an awakened bodhisattva, and he was not uh, fascinated only with this three-dimensional world. We know that this three-dimensional world is the outcome of many evolution, the, of many developments of different forces from the higher dimensions. This organism, for instance, the physical body, is called an organism. But we know that uh, there are many organisms in this planet. The animals have different organisms as well. Plants are other organisms. Minerals are other organisms. But all of them, whether they are from the mineral, plant, animal, or human kingdom, they are cellular. So that's precisely the difference. This three-dimensional life of the organism of this three-dimensional planet are cellular. And you know that each cellular cell, cell is formed by molecules, and each molecule by atoms, etc. So this is how we have to understand and comprehend. Why is this physical body called organism? Because it's formed by organs. We have many organs. The stomach is an organ, the liver is an organ, the eyes are another, other organs, the lungs, etc. There are many complicated systems in this physical body, and that's why it's called organism, because it's made by many organs. Of course, each organ is made by cells, and that's why I said this is a cellular world, physical world. So, in Gnosticism, we study the cell in order to understand that. What this lady was telling the master is that some cells that are not aromatic of certain plants, when they are impregnated by the vibrations of the scent by the, of the perfume of other plants which emit ar aroma, they are impregnating the other plant. And thus, the other plant becomes also perfumed. This is precisely what uh, in every single organism happens. We emit vibrations. Like in this moment, I am giving this lecture with this organism, which is called physical body. And I am uttering words. Those are vibrations that you are capturing with your ears. And therefore... The word is entering into your brain and you are analyzing with your brain the topic that I'm talking about. Thoughts also are emitted. And you know that you think. But if you, have, you are a very sensitive person in the solar plex, you have the telepathic chakra that capture the thoughts of people. In our doctrine, we teach the way to develop that chakra in order to communicate telepathically at a distance. There are many other senses that unfortunately people are not, uh, do not have developed, but we teach how to develop. The main thing here is to understand and to comprehend the cell. 
because as I told you in the previous lecture, every cell has 48 chromosomes. Conventional science said that only 46 because they only see 23 pairs of chromosomes. But they ignore that there are other pairs of chromosomes related to the vital body, the superior aspect of the vital body, which in Russia was baptized with the name of bioplastic body. In other words, we have a tetradimensional part, a fourth dimensional part that belongs to this three-dimensional body that we have. So when we refer to the physical body, we always refer to that superior aspect. And that's why we state the cell has 48, not 46 chromosomes. So each chromosome, of course, is just like a, a strength element that uh, science is calling this day and age DNA. Deoxyromunucleic acid. Because they are made, of course, of two uh, winding lines that shrink and make, what we see, which is a chromosome in itself. That's the DNA. Within the DNA, you know very well, people talk about DNA, this DNA is very much, are the genes. The genes which connect the cell to the supra dimensions. This is something, of course, which in the conventional side don't talk about. But in the previous lecture, if you remember, we were talking about the protoplasmic bodies. And we emphasize that the protoplasmic bodies, which are related with the mind and the emotion that we have within, and that we always sense that are, but we don't see it, they are molecular and atomic. While the physical body is cellular. So, this is the connection here that we have to understand and to comprehend that which in the previous lecture was called the genotype. Geno related with the genes. Those genes that I'm referring now that are precisely in the DNA, which are the recollection of the inheritance that we bring when we are going to make a new body. So the genes, of course, of the DNA are connected to the protoplasmic bodies. And this is something that we have to understand and comprehend. And in the protoplasmic bodies is where we have that that we call the inheritance the inheritance or cosmic inheritance that we experience when we were animals, when we were plants, when we were minerals. We talk that the protoplasmic bodies evolved from the mineral kingdom to the plant kingdom, to the animal kingdom, to the human kingdom. But in every kingdom, those protoplasmic bodies project that inheritance in the construction of the physical body whether the kingdom where it is but within the protoplasmic bodies is the essence the consciousness of that that we call the intelligence which is directly connected to the spirit to that that in the previous lecture we call it the noumenon the intelligence that will create that phenomenon. In science, the phenomenon is called phenotype. So we said that genotype creates or is the outcome, the cause of the phenotype. In other words, the genes are the cause of the phenomenon that we call organism. In other words, in this physical world, there are many phenomena, many phenomena. 
Each organism is a phenomenon. The physical body is a phenomenon. The tree is a phenomenon. But when we go beyond the cell, beyond that that we call genome or genome, which is a word that is a mixture of genes with chromosome. When we take all the genes from all the chromosomes of the center of the cell, and then we form that, that the scientists call genome or genome. So each one of us has a different genome because that genome is made based on the inheritance that is taken from the protoplasmic bodies. Because I told you, the genes and the chromosomes are made by molecules. Those molecules are directly connected with the molecular bodies, the protoplasmic bodies. This is precisely the cause of our physical body. But in the previous lecture, I told you that those protoplasmic bodies, the origin of those protoplasmic bodies come from very ancient times. The evolution of this planet Earth comes from the Saturnian epoch. Very ancient epoch. So then you have that unfortunately, because in the Lemurian epoch, which is explained in the Bible as the falling of, of humanity, when, the, when certain cosmo creators or elements from the outside world came to this planet Earth in order to help. In order to help in the genome, or genome, which means in order to alter the structure of the cell of the physical body at that time. And, of course, it is... Uh, clear that we transmit our genome, our inheritance, through the sexual act. So the sexual act is something necessary for the human organism in order to alter the genome. Because you know very well that when a man and a woman are united and the sperm leaves the or physical organ of the man and engenders the ovum of the woman, and then we have the first cell, which is the union of two karmas, or two causes, the man and the woman. But that inheritance that we are taking from our parents is also influenced by the inheritance that we have in the protoplasmic bodies. And this is precisely what we call genotype. So the genotype, as you see, is influenced by the father and the mother and by the protoplasmic bodies that every soul has internally. So when you see the development of that cell within the womb of the woman... You know that one cell divides into four, the four into eight, the eight into sixteen, and eventually becomes a fetus, and then a baby that will be the outcome of two phenotypes or two phenomena. The woman, which is a phenomenon, a man, physically speaking, which is a phenomenon, are creating another phenomenon. That is the phenotype. But that phenotype will develop a different individuality. And that's precisely related with the protoplasmic bodies and with the consciousness and with the inner monad of each one of us. This is something that we have to comprehend. Because one thing is the inheritance and another thing is the individuality. We receive mechanical inheritance. You know that from the zero to the seven, eight or nine years of age, the child is really a duplicate 
of that father or mother. Because the genome multiplies or projects its influence into another body, another phenotype. But that phenotype, this boy, is going to develop inside a personality which will give him certain kind of individuality related with the inheritance that he received from his or her parents and his own or her own inheritance cosmic forces that he has in his protoplasmic bodies. So the monad in this case is related with it. The monad, the spirit, the known went on, is the one that is directing according to that cause and effect, that karma, the new body. And of course, during the womb of the mother, that monad, which is creating that new physical body, fights very strongly against the inheritance which is mechanical from nature. But of course the inheritance that we have, the karmic inheritance that we have in our genes, is very strong. And when that uh, child goes out of the womb of the mother, still the mother has power in order to change the essence and to change the genome of that boy or that girl during the first nine years of age. This is how you see that the monad and the essence is very obvious and shown from that age. But as the boy or the girl is developing that individuality that we call personality, this is another vehicle within the physical body, this creature is acquiring habits, to the motor center and all the examples, all the samples that he sees from his father and mother. And uh, at that age, I repeat, there is a struggle, a battle between the monad and those inheritance that he is receiving through the senses. Because as we explain, or the extraterrestrial lady was explaining to the master, the aromatic plant impregnate with its aroma the plant which is not aromatic. And that was happening with the boy, with the girl, when they, they are uh, small, they are babies, seven or eight, nine year old. They receive the aroma, the scent or the stench of their parents. And unfortunately this is how their personality is developed and is impregnated with some good things and bad things. And uh, in the inheritance, of course, in the protoplasmic bodies, we absorb that. The protoplasmic bodies absorbed the impregnation or the vibrations of parents, father, sisters, brothers, relatives at that age. The protoplasmic bodies absorb that. In other words, those impressions are internalized. And eventually they are exteriorized in order to manifest to the personality. This is something that we have to understand and comprehend. How the genome of the cell of a, of a, of a new organism receives the impressions in order to be an individual. Unfortunately, the samples, the examples which the boy receives from adults only make a wrong personality because most of the time we are transmitting uh, our own uh, inheritance. People are identified too much with their inheritance. The mission of us in this level of humanoids is to become individuals, to have our own way, our own wisdom, 
our own way, our, our own idiosyncrasy. In other words, to express the being, to express the monad, the spirit in us. That is what is called, in many lectures we said, a human. A mind, a man, that expresses his hum, his spirit, in himself. His own individuality. But there is a struggle between the individuality of the being and the individuality of the personality that receives his influence from the exterior world and from the protoplasmic bodies that internalize those impressions, not only from this life, but from previous lives. This is how you have to understand and comprehend all the impressions that we receive in this physical body are internalized and crystallized in the protoplasmic bodies. So when a person dies, the physical body dies, but the internalization of those impressions that he received, they don't die. They return into a new body. And when that new body is made, is made based on those impressions that were internalized in the protoplasmic bodies, plus the inheritance that the boy or the girl received from his physical parents at that moment. This is how you understand what the lady was telling the master. The vibrations of the perfume of the plant impregnates the odor that is not aromatic. But those vibrations of that plant are not only physical. They are related with the vibration that the plant takes from the environment, from nature, and from the vibration that that plant receives from his own particular individual noumenon, or monad, or spirit. So when you are in contact with a plant or with an animal, be sure that you are not only in contact with the physical element, with a cellular organism, but from the protoplasmic bodies of the animal and the spirit or the noumenon of that particular animal. And that would make the vibration. Of course, the genes or the genome, as we say, or that particular element in Lemuria, the genes were perfect, pure, because they were manifesting the vibrations or the inheritance of the protoplasmic bodies at that time, of that humanity, plus the vibrations of the beings at that time that were masters. So the gene was pure. They were not lust, anger, pride, vanity, laziness within the protoplasmic bodies. So the vibrations that were coming from those bodies were spiritual vibrations, perfect psychological vibrations, and since they were in a related, they were expressing, of course, uh, harmony, peace, wisdom, knowledge. But as you know, I don't want to repeat uh, the event that happened in Lemuria. I just want to tell you that their genome, their genome was altered by the activity of certain elements that we call Lucifer. Because Lucifer is that sexual potence that acts in the sexual act. And by what we call the orgasm or spasm, the eating of the forbidden fruit, the genome of those Lemurians were altered. And therefore, for a wrong calculation, that genome was altered after that, after the whole thing was fixed in Lemuria, and a new nature was born within the protoplasmic bodies of those people at that time, and that's what we call ego, and what in Tibet they call it psychological aggregates. Meaning that where certain psychic elements were added to the protoplasmic bodies that 
in that case, we, we start having a double type of psyche. And this is a problem. Of course, all the humanities that have received that type of help, their genome is altered, and they start having a different uh, identification or a different way of manifesting themselves to the world. And that's why, because of that alteration, alter the protoplasmic bodies of the Lemurians, the genome was also altered as a consequence. The Lemurians start developing the Kunda buffer organ that we always explain. The alteration of the genome, of the genotype, is made through the sexual act. It's the only way that can be altered. Of course, we know that our genome can be altered as well because of the selection, natural selection that we explain. That uh, we are, of course, transforming our phenotype, our phenomenon, our physical body, our minds, etc., with the information, with the practices that we do, etc., and eventually, the genes, our sexual genes, are changed. And eventually, the children that we have will be the outcome of uh, different influences that our physical body receives, which is the phenotype. Unfortunately, as we know, there was a mistake <coughs> in mathematics, transfinite mathematics. And that alteration in the gen genome uh, was fixed in the wrong time. It took too much time. But in other uh, humanities where this alteration is done, because that happens not only in this planet Earth, it happens in all the planets. When that alteration is done and humanity start knowing what we call uh, evil or wrong thing, and then the vibrations of other humanities, of other planets, start to impregnate the psyche, the protoplasmic bodies, the cellular body of other humanities, and they change, they turn into good. They become aromatic. They become aromatic like the other plants and other humanities. We have beautiful aroma. But in this planet, it's not happening this. Why we are not transformed? What we, what, why is this planet not uh, transforming its own genome in order to have beautiful bodies and different type of psyche? And the answer is because a mistake first made in Lemuria. And the other is because of the karma that we have carried from other cosmic days in our protoplasmic bodies. When you read the book, The Revolution of Beelzebub, you discover there that Beelzebub was a being that came from the Saturnian epoch. Three previous cosmic days. But he sustained himself with those protoplasmic bodies that he had since the time of the Saturnian epoch, solar epoch, lunar epoch, because those bodies of Beelzebub do not belong to the three-dimensional world, but to the fifth dimension, as our protoplasmic bodies belong to the, the third dimension. I mean, to the fifth dimension. So this is how we have to understand. Uh, an individual that has certain abilities or certain powers, and that moves certain energies can sustain himself during many cosmic days with the protoplasmic bodies when the evolution is descending. When it's coming from the superior worlds. But when the evolution reaches the top, I mean the bottom in this case, which is 
the three-dimensional world in which we are, because from this three-dimensional world we go up. The evolution of the planet comes like this. First, mental plane in the fifth dimension. Then, astral plane in the fifth dimension. Then, the ethereal plane in the fourth dimension. And finally, the cellular plane or physical plane in the three-dimensional dimension. Or the third dimension. So from here, we are in the bottom in this very moment. So you see, this cellular world that we have right now, this chemical Earth, is the outcome of three previous evolutions of the planet in other dimensions. Now, the planet has to become ethereal again into the fourth, and then astral in the fifth, and mental. They have to return like a like a V of Victor, like that. So Belzebub, as the example that we are giving here, descended from the Saturnian epoch, solar epoch, ethereal epoch, and into this physical epoch. But he cannot exist no, uh, anymore because now the evolution is going up. So those protoplasmic bodies cannot go up. You have to be disintegrated. If he doesn't, or he wouldn't enter into the white large, he would be disintegrated because from this planet Earth, from this three-dimensional world, comes only the inferior dimensions, clipos, disintegration. That's it. There is no more future for the protoplasmic bodies from these or other epochs. When the planet starts ascending towards the light, protoplasmic bodies have to be disintegrated. And only solar bodies can abide. And this is something that uh, many students ignore. So therefore you see that unfortunately the karma that we brought in our protoplasmic bodies come from a very ancient time. And this is what we carry in the protoplasmic bodies that we have, which is our mind and emotion. And which we call the five skandhas in Tibet. So, of course, our protoplasmic bodies are very ancient. Or, if they are being created anew, they have inherited. They will inherit the karma of the protoplasmic bodies of that fifth dimension. So, to alter that, we have to work with the genome. We have to work with the genotype. Because if we don't work with the genotype to alter the genes of our cells, then that psychological work cannot happen. Well, that revolution, that transformation, is impossible. That's why we need this physical body in order to start transforming ourselves from the very bottom. And the only way is by altering our own particular individual genome, which is related with the genotype. And that's only possible to alter with sex. With the, the sexual energy is the only one that can transform it. Otherwise, if we continue with degeneration, then the genome becomes more degenerate. The genes in this day and age of this population that we have on this planet Earth is completely altered, degenerate. Because we go into the genes of any cell, of any physical human organism, and we connect and we go clairvoyantly from the genes to the protoplasmic bodies, we discover that within these, those protoplasmic bodies is the karma, the cause of that cell. And that cause has a very ancient origin. But moreover, within the protoplasmic bodies, we have... Lust, anger, greed, pride, envy, laziness, gluttony, and many other defects. Because the ego is molecular. The ego is made by many organisms. Listen carefully. Many organisms. As our physical body is an organism, but it's a cellular organism, 
The ego or the skandhas are made by different organisms. But those organisms are not cellular. They are molecular. And many other are atomic organisms. Because only by being molecular or atomic can abide within the protoplasmic bodies. And those elements or psychological aggregates are the ones that express themselves through the brain. Our physical brain is a physical vehicle of the mind, protoplasmic mind. And in the solar plex from the heart to the navel, we have the emotional brain that expresses the molecular elements of the protoplasmic bodies, which we call desires. Kama Rupa. So therefore, <coughs> here you find that uh, we always alter our physicality with the vibrations of our mind and emotions. Plus the inheritance that we receive from our parents and the environment. That's why we said that as phenomena, we are the outcome of phenotype, genotype, and paratype. The genotype that we are talking here, which is the genome, the, 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 the genes of our cell, the phenotype, which is related with the physical body, and the influence that we receive from other physical bodies in the school, in the university, etc. And all of that goes into the personality. And when that is internalized, then become psychological aggregates. What is the worst is this. We have psychological aggregates related with Christianity, with Buddhism, with Islam, with many religions, and with science. Because those elements are all the information, the knowledge that we receive through the senses, the physical senses. We internalize them, but we don't comprehend them. When a knowledge, when an information, when a vibration is captured by the senses of the physical body and is not comprehended in the consciousness, in the noumenon, because each one of us has his own particular noumenon, then what happens? becomes another psychological aggregate that influences the inheritance. So therefore, when we incarnate again into a new body, we have in that psychological element those elements that will make us to belong to certain uh, families or certain uh, uh, idiosyncrasies. For instance, there are people that know very well that the inheritance is transmitted to the blood. In many lectures, we said and we explained that in the left ventricle of the heart, we have the atom nous which is that atom which is connected to the monad. So the only element in our physicality that connects to our spirit, to our monad, is the atom nous in the left ventricle of the heart. To that atom nous is how we transmit all the commands of the spirit into the body. Did you ever hear that the physical body is a temple of God? And that God abides within the body? Well, is it, it's how it is. Because the life that comes from the noumen on the spirit influence the atom nous and through the blood spreads to the body. But unfortunately, we find there the inheritance also. 
that we receive from the liver that is related to the protoplasmic bodies. And there is a battle in our organism where the superior forces of the monad fight against the inferior forces of our inheritance. There are some people so identify with their with their inheritance that they don't allow their monad, their spirit to develop because they think that the inheritance is uh, more important, has priority than the spirit. That's what happened with Belzebub. People that never heard or never hear the influence of the inner spirit. Their, their own noumenon, their own spirit, their own monad. And they only follow traditions which are related with the motor center, the inheritance which are related with the protoplasmic bodies. You know very well that when the, the genotype is transmitted into the, in the sexual act, the outcome is the phenotype, the phenomenon. If those in, or that information that the psyche is receiving to the influence of adults will be explained and comprehended in the consciousness, then the individual will develop internally, spiritually. The problem is that in the physical body, the phenotype, we receive a lot of information about religion. And that goes and makes another psychological aggregate that the Bible calls the hypocritical Pharisee. The hypocritical Pharisee is precisely that psychological element that everybody carries in their, in their protoplasmic bodies. That uh, hypocritical Pharisee might be related with Christianity, might be related with Judaism, with Islam, with Buddhism, with Zoroastrism, with any religion. Or with science, we will say it. But in this case, we will call it scribe. Uh, an element that is related only not to the spirit or to the knowledge of religion, but to only science without believing in the noumenon, without believing in the spirit. So there we have that people, unfortunately, when they get their new body, they start following traditions, which are, of course, now altered. As Master Jesus says, you have altered the doctrine of God. You have altered the doctrine of the ancients. And then you only follow, follow traditions, which means your inheritance, which is completely altered. And you are making of religion an idol. So therefore... Those individuals that want to become spiritual or that want to develop to make the revolution of the consciousness, they have to fight against their own inheritance. They have to study carefully and meditate in all those elements all of those concepts related with their religion or all of those concepts related with their science in order to comprehend their consciousness and to internalize them in the consciousness, not in the protoplasmic bodies. Because when we internalize or capture a knowledge and we don't comprehend it in the consciousness, but only storage or store it into the protoplasmic bodies, we form a psychological aggregate, which is an obstacle for the alteration of the genome of, in order to make a superior element. Justification or condemnation of those elements do not help. Unfortunately, people in this day and age, they are justifying those elements. 
our physical planet, as you know, this humanity is completely altered. We think that we are evolving, but in reality, we are devolving. The genome is devolving. Some creatures have more than 48 chromosomes. They have 49. There's more loss, more density. We need to clean the protoplasmic bodies. We need to create superior bodies in order to have that transformation that we are uh, hoping. So, this is how you understand, how you comprehend how an aromatic plant impregnates the plant which is not aromatic. But many masters in the past came to this planet and only to impregnate with his good vibrations the genome, the psyche, the spirit of many creatures on this planet Earth. Unfortunately, people in different times, they are so attached to their inheritance that they don't hear the solar thoughts, the solar ideas. And they think that the way of thinking, the way of feeling is the best. Ignoring that that way of thinking and that way of feeling is related with a protoplasmic inheritance that sooner or later will descend into path, into the inferior dimensions. And uh, the alteration of the physical body in the positive way, the mutation of our physical body, is only possible by altering, through the sexual act, our own particular individual genome by the activity of the sexual energy. And that's precisely what we call the genotype. Transmutation, transformation. And that's why all religions, all messengers from ancient times always emphasize the transformation of the individual through three factors. So that's why the Master Samael on Ver tell us that we carry in our blood, in our bones, the inheritance, because it's in each cell that we have that. But by going inside of our own particular body, we connect to the protoplasmic bodies, and then we can discover the ancient civilizations, ancient times, because everything is recorded. The data is in the protoplasmic bodies, which is transmitted to the cell. Then we can discover and see the reality, the defects and vices, the mistakes, that we, have, that we need to correct. It's not by believing in something that we are going to do this transformation. It's by interiorizing ourselves, by going deep down into the very cause of this mistake that was uh, made or that occurred in this planet since the time of Lemuria. But I repeat, the mistake was because the three previous cosmic days have a very low effect in the genome of this physical body. Too much karma, too many individuals in those apples that became degenerated and that transmit their degeneration in the new protoplasmic bodies because this is a mechanical evolution of nature. And the only way to transform ourselves is by doing consciously is by doing that transformation from the very bottom of our being, which is our monad. And this is how it's transmitted through many books that in this day and age, unfortunately, people do not understand. They do not comprehend. In this very moment comes into my mind, Genesis. This word comes from the very root of genes, generation, genotype. And of course, that's why it's a great discrepancy between the conventional science and religion, because both of them ignore 
the superior dimensions and the inferior dimensions. But when you study the book of Genesis, then you discover that every narration, every story is related with different symbols, interpreted in different, in seven ways. In relation with this lecture, comes into my mind, for instance, Abraham. Abraham, as you know, is written in the Bible, means exalted father. Many times in different lectures, I told you that Abraham is related with Chesed, or that we call Gedulah in the tree of life. So Chesed, Gedulah, is our own particular monad. That is what we call in Genesis Abraham. This is what Moses wrote in Genesis. Now it is written there that Abraham came from the city of Ur, from the Chaldeans. When you read that literally, you just don't get anything. But when you read in the Hebrew letters, the word you are, Ur, the right translation should be light. That Abraham came from the light. Because this is how you write light in Hebrew. Aleph, Vav, Ar, Aur. And which in the Bible is translated as Ur. Of course, many times in different lectures we told you that our own particular monad, Hesed, or Gedula, which the Bible calls Abraham, is a spark from any of the seven cosmos creators that are related with the ains of Or, which is the ray of Okidanok, the ray of creation. That in order to create, divide itself into seven aspects, the seven spirits. And we said that the fifth of those seven spirits is the angel Samael, the cosmocatal Samael. Well, all of us, individually speaking, we came as a ray of light from the absolute. That ray of light is what we call Glorian. Okidanok. So, that Abraham came from Okidanok, that Abraham come from the Glorian, or from the city of Ur, as is written in the Bible, we will say, really, that city is Okidanok. Because each one of us, without exception, from the Noumenon point of view, we came from the ends of Ur as a lightning as a ray of light, unconscious ray of light. But in order to acquire uh, consciousness or individuality, knowledge of oneself, the seven cosmo creators impregnated each ray with our own particular individual Abraham. So there are many Abrahams on heaven as many people in the earth. And that Abraham is a spark of light that came from the city of Aur, or city of Or, which means light. The seven cosmos created that we're explaining here develop in the world of Bria, the world of creation. And they are related with the Sephira Chochma. Chochma is the second Sephira, is the tree of life. That in the world of Atziluth, Received the name of Yod He Vav He. So follow that. Follow that. Jehovah, in other words, as translated into English, is the name of God in Chokhmah, in the world of Atziluth. And that Chokhmah is related with creation in the world of Bria, which divides in seven spirits. That's why it is written in the book of Revelation. That the Lamb of God, Chokhmah, wisdom, has seven horns and seven eyes. So therefore, the one that is saying to Abraham, 
go out of Ur into a land that I will show you, which is Jehovah, that the Bible translate, translates as the Lord, is that ray of light, that glory and that each one of us within. Because our own particular glory and is connected to a, one of the seven glory ends, which are directly related with Chokmah in the world of Bria. So the one that is telling Abraham, go down out of this light into a place that I will show you, is precisely Jehovah or Chokmah in the world of Bria, which is the world of creation, to Abraham. So Abraham goes down with Sarah, Sarai, the feminine aspect of that light, which is called the Shekinah, down into Malkut. How? This is how I explain it in this lecture. The monad that Abraham commands the forces, according to karma, in order to create in the physical world, in, that is called Mazarim, Egypt. Or Malkut. But in Malkut, there are two ways of creation. That's why Mazarin Egypt has, of course, the other aspect, which is Agar. Which is the way in which we multiply physically. Everybody here multiplies physically. And we, we don't, I don't know how to explain how. Because in the, the, the previous uh, explanation, we explain how everything is transmitted, physically speaking. So from that is what is born that we call Ishmael. Ishmael, or the fire in the, of God in the activity of Mother Nature. All of us, in that sense, we are Ishmael. But Jehovah, Chokmah, the Glorian don't want to have any, uh, anything re related with that particular procreation or multiplication. That is only through inheritance. What we want is to be born from Isaac, Isaac, which is precisely the first initiation of major mysteries, in which the superior monad that we call Gebura is united with Gesed, that we also call Gedula. When Gebura and Gedula are united, we have the master. That's why in Kabbalah we said that Abraham and Isaac are one. The wife of Abraham, Zara, is equal to the wife of Isaac. But it's the way in which we utilize nature in Malkut in order to transmute the sexual energy and to make that transformation of the genome inside of us. The outcome of that transformation, of that mutation, or sexual transmutation of Abraham is Isaac, which is the one that is the outcome of the solar forces of Jehovah inside of us. So when the Bible talks in that time or in that way about Abraham and Isaac, it's related with the first initiation of major mysteries in which the individual starts transforming his own sexual force in order to be born, you listen, to be born for the first time in the superior world as a master. And that is possible when the booty is united with the Adman. Or when Isaac, which symbolizes Geburah, is united with Abraham, which is Hesed. But of course, the whole story in Genesis explains that. Mutation. But the people think that by believing in what is written there, they are going to, to, uh, the mutant is going to appear. That's why it is written that Agar had Ishmael. And Ishmael is the outcome of all this physical world, this humanity, in which we receive also blessings, but we have nothing to do with uh, to be born again internally. 
We will say it as Paul says in the New Testament. The two covenants. One covenant to multiply physically. And the other covenant in order to multiply internally with the transmutation. With the seed of Christ. Chokmah. With the seed of Christ. Which is Jehovah in the world of Atsiluth. This is the whole explanation. And of course, you know very well that the Bible speaks and says about the two, the two covenants, right? The two wives of Abraham, Sarah and Agar, the two children of, uh, of Abraham, Isaac and Ishmael. But then, when Isaac is born, which is the superior part of the consciousness that we call Neshama, also has to go ahead and in order to create the true human being within. The first initiation of major mysteries is not the end of it. Because also the vital body, which is the superior part of the physical body, has to be influenced by the monad. Because remember that we said in many lectures that the monad is a trio of Chesed, Geburah, and Tifereth. And Tifereth is related with that element that the Bible called Jacob. So when Jacob appears, appears of course, through the transmutation, the transformation, in the world of Yesod. In Yesod we find that it's related with water. And many great Kabbalists symbolize Yesod as a man, as a human being. And all the great men that appear in Yesod are related with that man. With that willpower, we will say. Because Tifereth is related with the Assad in relation with willpower. And that's why you find that Isaac had two children. Jacob and Esau. Here again the inheritance. When you start advancing in this transformation that is written in Genesis... After the first initiation of major mysteries, you enter into another initiation, but there is a division, an alteration, we will say, in the cell, in the physical cell. Because then, uh, Esau appears first, which is that transformation that we acquire with this science, mingle with the protoplasmic bodies, Mingle with the inheritance that we have through the blood, the poison blood, or the venom blood. But then, we have to follow our own willpower in order to overcome that Esau, that is the outcome of the inheritance. So that inheritance that we have follows us in different steps, and we have to fight against it. And that's why... The first thing is the alteration of the physical body in the body of the initiate. But God doesn't want anything to do with that alteration of the physical body because it continues in the physical world. What we need is the outcome of Isaac, which is the solar fire rising in the world of Yesod in order to appear the will of God. That beautiful aspect of the essence Related with Tifereth. In which the essence has to grow. Related with chastity. That's why the story of Jacob. Is in relation with that aspect. It is written that Jacob. Is the one that fights. Against an angel. In that world of Yesod. <coughs> that angel of course is the power. The own. The power of the sex. That we have to overcome. In which, unfortunately, the inheritance, the animal inheritance, we inherit through the sexual act. So in the very sexual act, how do we overcome Esau in order to give our first right to Jacob? It's written in the Bible that Jacob rests his head in the stone by... Studying Kabbalah, we discovered that 
Jacob, Tifereth, expresses itself in the pineal gland. Many times we say that the pineal gland is the seat of the soul. What soul? The willpower soul, the human soul, which is Jacob. Even though it's related with Tifereth, it expresses in the pineal gland, which is the head. So when you read in the Bible that Jacob rests his head on the stone, that means that he is starting the second initiation. In the, the initiate start his second initiation, in which he is going to crucify the vital body, but putting his head in the stone, which is, of course, in this case, the sex, which represents the coccygeal bone. The coccygeal bone is the stone of the assault, which is connected to the sexual organs. To put the head on the stone means to start transmuting the sexual energy in that level. And that's why Jacob, he says, that he built a, a pillar, a column upon that stone. That pillar that Jacob, or is written in Genesis, is the spinal column. To build that pillar means to rise the energy from Yesod up to Keter. In the head, in the pina gland, where is, where is Jacob. And that implies a fight against the Lord of Yesod, which is Lucifer. The sexual potency that we have to transmute. Because if you don't do it, you go down. It's written there in Genesis that uh, Jacob anointed the stone on top, right, with oil. To anoint the stone with oil means to transmute the sexual energy and rise it to the column, to the pillar, to the head. All the sexual energy from the world of the assault going to the head in order to fortify the soul, which is in the pineal gland, which is Jacob. The same thing that is symbolized in, in Hinduism, the Shingalingam. The, the Shingam, or, or the Shiva Lingam, is the power of the Holy Spirit in the Lingam. And they, which is a stone where they pour oil on top of it. The same symbol here of Jacob. Pouring, of course, oil on the stone of Yesod means to pour oil in the Shiva Lingam. Of, uh, or the Lingam of Shiva, in other words. But Shiva is the Holy Spirit, which is a sexual energy. And this is how, by anointing the stone through sexual transmutation to white tantra, is how Jacob discovers that there is a ladder from the matter to the spirit. And that ladder, where the angels go up and down, is the spinal column. Because through the spinal column is how you raise and decrease 33 degrees of masonry. And to acquire one initiation in another initiation, this is how Jacob discovered. In order for him to grow up as human soul, he has to develop that. Of course, the third initiation of major mysteries, which is in the astral plane related with Hod, comes after Jacob. But Jacob, when he discovered that, he becomes the vehicle of the angel Israel. In other words, his song Monad. His song Glorian, his name is Ish Fire. Ra, the solar force. El, God. And that Israel has 12 songs. You know how. This is a mystery related with the transformation in which all the forces of the zodiac related with the 12 tribes enter again into the genome of the physical body and make another transformation because they go into Egypt. Comes from above into the protoplasmic body or protoplasmic forces in order to go into Egypt in order to make another transformation which is the creation of the astral solar body which the Master Samael explains in the seven words. So here you find Astral solar body is in relation with Joseph and Ephraim. 
Ephraim and Joseph, related with the astral solar body that the Master explains, I repeat, in the seven words, the book that we have in the uh, Logos Mantra and Theurgy. So, but before that, is the crucifixion of the vital body in relation with Joseph. Because there are only three living entities which follow the law of God in heaven, which is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hesed, Geburah, Tifereth is a monad. That's why Jesus said, God, Jehovah, the Glorian, is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Who are these living? The living is Hesed, Geburah, and Tifereth. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Those are the three living things that each one of us carry within, but that we have to develop. They have to descend into the matter, into Malkut, and to have that, trans- that mutation that we are creating, uh, explaining here. Then, the superior aroma of the monad will be impregnated. The, other, the plant, which is the physical world, which is our own particular genome, and the transformation occurs, which is the spiritual individual, which will be alike those space travelers. But of course, in the past, as I said, many great messengers came and gave this knowledge to humanity. But they were so attached to their inheritance, to their traditions, and they didn't follow the, the rules. Still, we find in this day and age, people that are so attached to their religion, even to Gnosis, to be attached to Gnosis is bad. We have to make of this knowledge consciousness. We have to meditate, to comprehend, and not, not to be a fanatic, not to make a psychological aggregate out of Gnosis, because that will become our inheritance. And we will be, of course, altering our genome, but in the wrong way. Because the right way to alter is by making consciousness of this knowledge that we are receiving. And that is written, as you see, in the Bible. So the stone of Jacob, when he rested his head, is Yesod, the sexual organs. The coccygeal bone, which is exactly below the head. Because he said that he rested, he put a stone beneath his head. And if you see your head, your skull, what you have in the very bottom is the coccygeal bone. That's the stone of Jacob. And from where, when he goes there, he sees the ladder, which is the spinal column, when you can go up to heaven by knowing how to transmute the sexual energy. That's the mystery of the Bible. That is how it's written in stories related with genotype and phenotype, the alteration of the individual through processes, through initiation. In other words, what we want, with the Gnostic we want, is to alter our genome. And the only way to do it is through initiations. And those initiations are made through the sexual transmutation between men and women. Because we need the cooperation in order to acquire that individualization that we want of the person, of the psyche. Because the individualization that we have in the personality is lost when we die physically. Because the personality disintegrates after we die physically. And a lot of people have that individuality in their personality. And they worship the personality, which is the outcome of the inheritance. And they hunt in order to make that personality stronger and stronger. Which, of course, becomes an obstacle for the individualization of the psyche. And at the end, we become failures. Because the physical body is not eternal, dies. And the personality also dies in its time. And if we have another opportunity, we will inherit. These elements that we are acquiring to our phenotype and to the genotype of our future parents. So are you following this? Do you comprehend this? Because this is how it is written in the Bible, the book of Genesis. It's a Bible, it's a book in order to meditate, in order to go and dive within, in order to get the wisdom. That was written by Moses. Unfortunately, it's being altered. As I said, Abraham came from the light. But they said they write it at the city of Ur. 
which existed, but everything is related with certain symbols in the physical plane in order for those that are unworthy to get lost and don't acquire the knowledge. Do you have questions? The question is, why don't the extraterrestrials uh, travel in genus state and not uh, in, in cosmic ships? Because in order to assist any humanity in other planets, they need equipment. They need elements that they cannot take in the fourth dimension. Technology, of course, is related with science. But the technology of extraterrestrials is united with religion. But not religion as we people understand, believing in something. Religion in the sense of religare, that they united already, already that physical genome with their own monad. So therefore they have the ability of manifesting themselves in any dimension. And also, of course, they can have powers of gene, gene science. But in order to manifest with you, they had to do it physically. And they uh, have uh, ships that can travel faster than the speed of light. Humanity is that their genome is exactly as our own, in the sense of shape. Because this humanity, unfortunately, has the, the habit of thinking that the extraterrestrials evolve in different ways and they have different shape like monsters, like chicken, like, like octopuses or something like that. Very stupid. They ignore that the origin, the seed of any human being is in the monad. And the monad expresses itself that example, that sample, that blueprint in any planet. Unfortunately, this planet has uh, the genome is altered, completely altered. It's sick. And becomes sick and sick and sick and more and more and more as the time passes. So, of course, in order to alter and to help this humanity, these extraterrestrials have their cosmic ships, their mother ships, where they can do it. Unfortunately, when they come down and try to help, they even renounce their immortality in their physical bodies and incarnate with a body, they, they inherit the physical body of the earth in order to help. And when they grow up and they start teaching what they need to teach in order to help this humanity, humanity takes them and gives them uh, to, to drink poison, like Socrates. Even the Buddha was poisoned. Jesus was crucified. And many other great solar beings that come in order to help, they kill them in this planet. And when they come in the cosmic ships in order to assist us, etc., they are persecuted with their airplanes, gun machines, in order to shoot them down. So therefore, they are now trying to help and they are always compassionate. But unfortunately, this humanity think that they come in order to conquer us. And here, of course, we are doing the last uh, effort in order to help they can come in genus state but for that you have to of course to work hard and to gain it because they have powers and great technology but remember the genome of this physical body needs to be impregnated with good vibrations that's why the master Samael taught uh, Tibetan exercises runes and many practices in order to alter the genome, in order to fortify the phenotype and to cause a different transformation in the genotype, in the sex, in order to transmute it and cause a transformation. But people, instead of doing that, they like to go to bars, cantinas, and to take alcohol or smoke marijuana, take drugs, or to hear rock and roll music, and all those vibrations that alter their phenotype, 
as a consequence, a terrible degenerate genes that transmit to the children. How are we going to have, I repeat, a golden age when the genome is completely altered in a very rotten way? We need to transform our physical body. We have a physical body, let us transform it, let us get good vibrations in order to be aromatic. Because we stink. We need to be aromatic. And for that we need to, to take the good vibrations. In the psyche, in the mind, in the emotions, everywhere. And to start transmuting, transforming the humanity from our very sexual level. Did you understand? This is the other question. The crossing of, of bloods. Yeah. America, yes. Of course, the crossing of bloods is very important. Anyhow, we, ha we, ha we, ha we have to choose always that blood, that genotype, because you know, the genes are made is the final crystallization of the blood, but also of our inheritance. And that's why in ancient times, where the genes were not so degenerated, I explained to you in other lectures about the Atlantean epoch, when the Hyperboreans mixed with the fourth sub-race of the Atlanteans, and they prohibited to the offspring to intermingle, to cross their blood, to make sexual act with other races of the Atlantean epoch in order to have that inheritance pure for the future generation, for the Aryan race. But in this epoch, the genome of this Aryan race is so degenerate that we cannot say, oh, they are not mixed with any others because it's, 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 it's wrong. And uh, unfortunately, through the blood, through the genes, many uh, races, many groups, ethnic groups, are inheriting fanaticism and uh, making of religion a weapon in order to kill other people. Because they do not understand, no, they comprehend that the change, the transformation has to be in the psyche. So they think that their race is better than the other, and that's precisely the ignorance of many ethnic groups in this day and age, and you know that. Religious wars are pointing to ignorance. Any ignorant makes religious work. But when you understand religion in your psyche, and that all religions have the same principles, you don't make wars. You don't think that you are better than anyone. And in this day and age, of course, there is a, a cross, uh, blood crossing in order to form the seven sub-race. And uh, this seven sub-race that will be the outcome of this crossing is not only... Uh, being crossed with the blood of people of all the races of the earth, but with extraterrestrials as well, as I told you in the other lecture. This is an extra help for our genome. But of course, the great beings demand the complete cleanse of the protoplasmic bodies, and moreover, the annihilation of those protoplasmic bodies completely in a very systematic way and the creation of the solar bodies in order to belong to the golden age. Why is it that if I can't control the karma of another person or negotiate the karma, I could inherit theirs in terms of through sexual act? Well, how is it, is the question, that uh, if I cannot alter the karma of other person, I can inherit that karma, through a sexual act. The, the, the answer is there. Through the sexual act. Precisely because adultery is so common. We are, to the sexual act, taking the values. That stench. That is. The stench. That is in the body of other people. The, the psychological stench. The stench of other people. To the sexual act. Every sexual act, you attract not only the vibration of the protoplasmic bodies, but of the physical body and of the psyche of the person. And if you cross sexually with other people, you are 
attracting that to your genome. And you are altering your physical body in a very degenerate way. So therefore, in the future life, you may be, be a celibate, but you have that inheritance in you because you were committing adultery. And on top of that, you were receiving those influences from the different forces. I'm talking about practicing alchemy with a person. Of course, when you practice al- with alchemy with another person, you start transforming your own genome with your transformation, with your transmutation. That's the base. You see, that's the stone. Because if you build on beliefs, which is the sand of the, of the Gospels, then you don't acquire anything. You have to build to change from the stone, which is the rock, which is sex, from the solar light, which is Okidanok, which is the Glorian, which is Christ, This is how Christ can transform you, by transmuting. And of course, you need the cooperation of the female aspect, because you need the vibrations of the two polarities in order to create. So am I not, in that sense, am I negotiating my karma? Are we both negotiating our karma? No, no. In that sense, every individual negotiates his own karma. But of course, when you are united sexually, you are sharing two karmas. You are one individual. When you are sexual, the, the man will abandon the father and mother and will unite with his wife and will, will be one flesh. Hmm? That's why a boy, a girl, a child, that is the outcome of that sexual union, had two influences, inheritances. The father and mother, plus his protoplasmic bodies. Hmm? So, our, our, of course, our, our duty is to change that inheritance, beginning with a without caring about if the other is doing it. You have to do it yourself. It's the only way, psychologically speaking and alchemically speaking. And of course, your genes will be altered. The type of sperm that you will have will be different. And eventually you multiply, that child will have a different type of cell, of DNA in other words. We have to alter our own DNA. To alter the DNA is only possible by the action of the monad, the noumenon, that created that DNA. And if every individual do that, everywhere, then a big change in society and humanity will happen. But unfortunately, humanity is not doing that. Humanity is altering their DNA, their genome, by sexually degenerating themselves. You see, the sexual organ is the most powerful organ that transmits forces and gives. But if you unite your sexual organ in the wrong way, you acquire elements that will alter your DNA in the wrong way. AIDS is the outcome of that, and many other diseases that are appearing in this day and age is because we don't take care of our sexual energy. And we applaud degeneration. We think that degeneration is okay. Okay in order to descend into hell. But it's not okay if we want to go up in the revolution of the consciousness. If we want to evolve, keep ahead. Because degenerated elements, protoplasmic elements, go into hell in order to be disintegrated. And another humanity will emerge that hope, hopefully will not have the same genome that we have now, which is very degenerate. Plus, the experiments that scientists are doing in their laboratories with the cells, you know, on top of that, when they don't take in account the noumenon, the spirit, they think that evolution is only the cell, whatever, and the psyche is the outcome, of the genes, whatever, they t- think backwards. Is that enough? You have questions? Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, 
we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Thank you.